The world of PC gaming is in constant flux. It's a landscape of new hardware, evolving player tastes, and a continuous tug of war between major tech companies. But how do we get a clear picture of where things are headed beyond the marketing hype? One of the most valuable sources of insight is Valve's monthly Steam hardware and software survey. And the latest data paints an interesting, and in some ways, eyebrow-raising picture of what's really powering PCs worldwide. What if I told you that nearly 40% of all Windows gamers on Steam are now using AMD CPUs? That's a significant climb and it's certainly putting pressure on Intel, the longtime CPU heavyweight champion of the world. Or consider this, while Nvidia still commands a massive share of the GPU market, so big it probably has its own postcode, their newest cards are being adopted rapidly despite what the reviews will have you think. Today we're digging deeper than surface level percentages. We'll break down what the Steam survey actually tells us and see how today's choices are building the gaming rigs of tomorrow. Let's get it. All right, before we dive into the data, a quick word about the Steam hardware and software survey. Every month Valve gathers anonymous data from a segment of their users about their hardware and software. It's voluntary and anonymous, so Valve doesn't know about your questionable game library, I'm looking at you, and gives us a unique large scale look at what gamers are really using, not just what's briefly available on retail shelves. Now it's not a perfect system. Sometimes we see unusual spikes. For example, there was a significant and unexpected jump in Chinese speaking users in early 2025 that can temporarily skew the overall data due to regional hardware preferences. But the more recent surveys like in April and May seem to have normalized it, giving us a clearer picture once again of what's actually going on. Knowing about these quirks is important for interpreting the data correctly. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. For ages, if you were talking about getting a gaming PC, you were definitely talking about Intel. But things have been changing quite a bit lately. And in May of 2025, the Steam survey for Windows shows that AMD processors are now in about 40% of those Windows machines, a very significant presence. That didn't happen overnight. It's been a steady ascent. It's like likely result of years AMD delivering strong performance, especially with their Ryzen series, and particularly those X3D versions that we all love. Take Amazon's sales data for March 2025, for instance. It showed AMD moving significantly more units than Intel on that platform in the US, with the Ryzen 7 9800 X3D being the reported top seller as it should be. Intel with their CPUs still has a larger share around 60%, but that lead is definitely shrinking. Now that doesn't mean Intel is out of the picture, far from it. They still control a huge part of the market, especially with pre-built systems and laptops where they have the strongest partnerships. But the buzz, particularly in the DIY space and around here, seems to be with Team Red right now. There are a few reasons, competitive prices, strong multi-core performance, which modern games increasingly uh, utilize, and the longevity of platforms like AM4 and now AM5, which gamers appreciate. They're not left in the wind not being able to upgrade their systems. AM4 has been supported all this time and it's super cool. I love that because no one likes changing their motherboards more often than what is necessary. What's also super clear from the survey is the shift in how many cores our CPUs have. Six core CPUs are now the most common setup for Steam users in almost 30% of the systems. Right behind that are eight core at just over 24%. This tells us that game developers can be more confident about optimizing games for more cores and gamers are building PCs ready for more demanding tasks. The days of quad core being good enough for top tier gaming, that's not happening anymore. That's quickly becoming a distant memory. When we look at graphics cards, it's still very much Nvidia's domain. They might even be tightening their grip. The May 2025 survey says that Nvidia GPUs are in 74% of PCs. That's massive. And what's really interesting is how quickly are adapting their newer RTX 50 series of cards despite the reviews being all over the place. The RTX 5070, for example, jumped to 0.71% in the May survey. That's insane how fast that grew. The RTX 5080, which is about $1,000 minimum, is at 0.47%. And the 5070 Ti is at 039 And the newer 5060 Ti, which just came out, is at 0.21. These percentages may sound really low, but when you think about they've only been out for a short amount of time, it's actually crazy. This shows there's a big appetite for Nvidia's latest technology, even though it comes with a premium price tag. Gamers are clearly showing that they value the performance and features like DLSS that Team Green offers. Doesn't matter what the price is, if they're getting the performance, they're paying for it. Over on the AMD side of the GPU fence, the picture's a little bit more nuanced. 
Their latest RDNA architecture powering the Radeon RX 9000 series is launched, but they haven't made a significant impact in the Steam survey just yet. For instance, the RX 9070 and 9070 XT, despite some positive reviews, highlighting solid performance for the price, was barely a blip in the May 2025 survey, with some industry folks suggesting that actual retail pricing and availability might be hindering their broader adoption to the Steam audience. The AMD RX 7800 XT, an older RDNA 3 card, did show a 0.27% share in the April 2025 survey, similar to what the RTX 5070 Ti had at that time. So the AMD cards can gain traction. It's just important to remember that the Steam survey reflects the entire user base, not just recent purchases. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that in the next months to see if the AMD GPUs can gain a little bit more visibility as availability improves and prices hopefully settle. Intel Arc's graphic cards? Well, it's good to have a third player, but they're still a very small fraction of the Steam survey stats. Mainly, their integrated graphics appearing with a small, steady percentage, probably in laptops. Beyond brand popularity, a key trend is that more GPUs feature increased VRAM. Over 89% of the system surveyed are now running DirectX 12 capable GPUs, which is a great sign for modern hardware adoption. The RTX 4060, often with eight gigabytes of VRAM, gained significant popularity according to the earlier 2025 survey. But the conversation is evolving. To keep your PC relevant, especially with new games becoming increasingly demanding, eight gigabytes is starting to look like the very bare minimum. Many 2025 build guides suggest that 12 gigabytes or perhaps even 16, like the 16 gigabyte version of the RTX 5060 Ti, is advisable if you want your games to run smoothly. I've done a video recently about the RTX 5060 Ti and my gaming PC. Make sure you check that out here on the channel. CPUs and GPUs get most of the attention, but other PC opponents tell an important story too. Take system RAM, for example. 16 gigabytes is still the most common, but in 43% of systems as of May 2025, it's a very common capacity, but 32 gigs is definitely on the rise. Back in February 2025, with a notable increase in Chinese users, it actually showed a significant jump in 32 gigabyte systems. This might indicate a regional preference or a prevalence in cyber cafes. We know that a lot of cyber cafes are used in China. Even with trends normalizing, the movement towards 32 gigs of RAM is the new standard for PC gaming. It's very clear. Modern games and multitasking simply benefit from more memory. DDR5, the current high-speed standard, and of course there's DDR6 for future upgrades. When it comes to operating systems, it should come as no surprise, Windows remains dominant, with Windows 11 on over 58% of systems and Windows overall on 95% of Steam users' PCs. But one of the interesting underlying trends is the steady growth of Linux. As of May 2025, Linux usage on Steam hit 2.69%, and that might sound small, but it's a notable increase from previous years, 1.47 in 2023 of May, and 2.32 in May of 2024. A lot of this is actually driven by Steam Deck, which runs Steam OS, a version of Arc Linux, which has made PC gaming on the go much more accessible. This is fostering a better environment for Linux gaming, and with improved driver support from AMD and Intel, and ongoing improvements to tools like Proton, amongst Linux gamers, AMD hardware is particularly popular, which aligns with Steam Deck's APU and open source community's preferences. That significant spike in Chinese language users in early 2025, hitting over 50% in February, was also a good reminder of how regional shifts can can affect the overall hardware picture. That particular spike seemed to align with preferences for Intel CPUs, Nvidia GPUs, 1440p screens, and 32 gigs of RAM, while later surveys show a return to previous distributions. The glowing global gaming market, especially in Asia, will undoubtedly continue to influence hardware availability and developer focus. So we have all of this data. AMD challenging Intel in CPUs, Nvidia, the GPU monarch, increasing RAM amounts, and Linux finding its niche. But what does this really mean for you, the gamer, considering your 2025 setup? AMD's resurgence in the CPU world isn't just an underdog story. It demonstrates what happens with sustained innovation and good value. Their Zen architecture, especially with the 3D vCache tech, has provided tangible gaming performance boosts. This has spurred Intel to intensify its efforts, which ultimately means better products and ideally more competitive prices for consumers. The move to CPUs with more cores is a direct result of evolving game design, games that are leveraging more threads for complex physics, smarter AI, and rich background processes. Nvidia's continued dominance in GPUs despite premium pricing uh, speaks to their strong brand. Feature sets like DLSS and ray tracing and often 
perceived reliability and or availability of their newest cards. The rapid uptake of the RTX 50 series shows that gamers are willing to invest for significant performance gains, even if those performance gains don't show themselves on charts. AMD's challenge is to consistently offer competitive performance and ensure broad availability at a compelling price to capture the market share. The increase in VRAM and system RAM? That's driven by developers pushing for higher fidelity graphics and more complex gaming worlds. Upcoming games are increasingly memory intensive. The shift from 1080p to 1440p as the target for many enthusiasts also necessitates more powerful hardware overall. And the surprise growth of Linux, while not world dominating, is important. The Steam Deck has proven the viability and appeal of a console-like PC gaming experience on Linux. This encourages developers to improve Linux support and hardware makers to provide better driver compatibility, contributing to a more diverse gaming ecosystem. More options are always beneficial. All right, taking all these trends, what's the typical solid PC gaming of 2025 likely to feature? Based on the Steam survey, and whispers in current trajectories, we can sketch out a reasonable picture. For the CPU, an eight core processor will likely be the standard for enthusiast builds, something capable of handling demanding games and multitasking without issue, unlike perhaps when you're trying to install a cooler. Think AMD Ryzen 7 series, like the 7800X3D or its Zen 5 9000 series successors, or a comparable Intel Core i7 or i9. Gamers are already trending towards these higher core counts. Graphically, the target is actually shifting to high refresh rate 1440p gaming as the mainstream sweet spot, with 4K becoming more accessible. I mean, I personally game in 4K, although it is more demanding. This points to GPUs in the class of an RTX 5070 or 5060 Ti, especially with the 16 gigabyte version, or a Radeon equivalent from the RDNA 4 line, maybe the RDNA 3 line if you're lucky, assuming improved market presence and no more hide and seek on store shelves, especially with pricing. VRAM will be crucial. 12 gigabytes is really the practical minimum, and just like the bouncer at the club's smooth frame rates with 16 gigs being the strongly recommended and smoother performance coming in the coming years, and even in some instances right now. System RAM will almost certainly be standardized at 32 gigabytes of DDR5. DDR5 kits are more affordable, and the performance benefits coupled with the memory demands of new games and applications make it a logical step up from 16 gigs. Some very high-end builds might even feature 48 or 64 gigs, but 32 is the mainstream choice. My gaming PC has 48 and I'm digging it. Storage, NVMe SSDs for the OS and primary games will be universal. It's the only thing I use nowadays. PCIe Gen 4 drives will be standard with Gen 5 drives becoming more common as prices decrease and motherboard supports broadens. Expect one terabyte as the baseline. Really good starting capacity when games nowadays are one to 200 gigabytes. It's absolutely ridiculous out there with two terabyte builds becoming more prevalent in the future. And while Windows will remain the dominant OS, we may see Linux continue its steady growth, particularly if innovative handhelds or PC designs start utilizing the custom Linux version. The Steam hardware survey, when examined closely, offers a fascinating look into PC gaming's evolution. It's like a public record of our collective hardware choices. Current trends indicate a CPU market that is more competitive than it has been in years, which is excellent for innovation and hopefully consumer pricing. Nvidia remains the GPU leader, but the rapid adaptation of its new technology coupled with AMD's potential to disrupt the market keeps the graphic card scene dynamic. What's clear is the standard for a good gaming PC is continually rising. More cores, more VRAM, large RAM capacities aren't just for extreme enthusiasts anymore. They're becoming essential to keep pace with the current and upcoming games. The choices gamers are making now, reflected in this data, are directly shaping experiences developers will create and the hardware will be considering for future upgrades in 2025 and beyond. But that's my interpretation of the Steam survey data. What about you? What do you think will be the 2025 average gaming PC? Are you surprised by AMD's CPU surge or Nvidia's continued GPU dominance? What kind of hardware are you currently running? And what are your plans to upgrade for the next year? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment below. And if you found this breakdown helpful or interesting, please give this video a like. It helps the channel. Consider subscribing for more deep dives into PC hardware and gaming trends. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't want to miss any of this future analysis. Thanks for watching, and I will catch y'all in the next one.